A number of cyberpunk derivatives have become recognized as distinct subgenres in speculative fiction. These derivatives, though they do not share cyberpunk's computers focused setting, may display other qualities drawn from or analogous to cyberpunk, a world built on one particular technology that is extrapolated to a highly sophisticated level. This may even be a fantastical or anachronistic technology, akin to retro futurism, a gritty transreal urban style, or a particular approach to social themes. One of the most well known of these subgenres, steampunk, has been defined as a kind of technological fantasy", and others in this category sometimes also incorporate aspects of science fantasy and historical fantasy. Scholars have written of these subgenres' stylistic place in postmodern literature, and also their ambiguous interaction with the historical perspective of postcolonialism. American author Bruce Bethke coined the term, "...cyberpunk." In his 1980 short story of the same name, proposing it as a label for a new generation of punk teenagers inspired by the perceptions inherent to the information age. The term was quickly appropriated as a label to be applied to the works of William Gibson, Bruce Sterling, John Shirley, Rudy Rucker, Michael Swanwick, Pat Cadigan, Louis Shiner, Richard Cadry, and others. Science fiction author Lawrence Person, in defining post cyberpunk, summarized the characteristics of cyberpunk thus. Classic cyberpunk characters were marginalized, alienated loners who lived on the edge of society in generally dystopic futures where daily life was impacted by rapid technological change, an ubiquitous datasphere of computerized information, and invasive modification of the human body. The relevance of cyberpunk as a genre to punk subculture is debatable and further hampered by the lack of a defined cyberpunk subculture, where the small cyber movement shares themes with cyberpunk fiction and draws inspiration from punk and goth alike. Cyberculture is much more popular though much less defined, encompassing virtual communities and cyberspace in general and typically embracing optimistic anticipations about the future. Cyberpunk is nonetheless regarded as a successful genre, as it ensnared many new readers and provided the sort of movement that postmodern literary critics found alluring. Furthermore, author David Brin argues, cyberpunk made science fiction more attractive and profitable for mainstream media and the visual arts in general. <laughs> <laughs> Futuristic derivatives Topic. Biopunk Biopunk emerged during the 1990s and focuses on the near-future unintended consequences of the biotechnology revolution following the discovery of recombinant DNA. Biopunk fiction typically describes the struggles of individuals or groups, often the product of human experimentation, against a backdrop of totalitarian governments or megacorporations which misuse biotechnologies as means of social control or profiteering. Unlike cyberpunk, it builds not on information technology but on biorobotics and synthetic biology. As in post cyberpunk however, individuals are usually modified and enhanced not with cyberware, but by genetic manipulation of their chromosomes. Nanopunk Nanopunk refers to an emerging subgenre of speculative science fiction still very much in its infancy in comparison to other genres like that of cyberpunk. The genre is similar to biopunk, but describes a world in which the use of biotechnology is limited or prohibited, and only nanites and nanotechnology is in wide use while in biopunk bio and nanotechnologies often coexist. Currently the genre is more concerned with the artistic and physiological impact of nanotechnology, than of aspects of the technology itself. Still, one of the most prominent examples of nanopunk is Crisis video game series. And much lesser famous examples is Generator Rex and Transcendence. <laughs> post cyberpunk. As new writers and artists began to experiment with cyberpunk ideas, new varieties of fiction emerged, sometimes addressing the criticisms leveled at the original cyberpunk stories. Lawrence Person wrote in an essay he posted to the Internet Forum Slashdot in 1998, The best of cyberpunk conveyed huge cognitive loads about the future by depicting in best show, don't tell fashion the interaction of its characters with the quotidian minutiae of their environment. 
In the way they interacted with their clothes, their furniture, their decks and specs, cyberpunk characters told you more about the society they lived in than classic SF stories did through their interaction with robots and rocket ships. Post Cyberpunk uses the same immersive world building technique, but features different characters, settings, and, most importantly, makes fundamentally different assumptions about the future. Far from being alienated loners, post Cyberpunk characters are frequently integral members of society, i.e., they have jobs. They live in futures that are not necessarily dystopic indeed, they are often suffused with an optimism that ranges from cautious to exuberant, but their everyday lives are still impacted by rapid technological change in an omnipresent computerized infrastructure. Person advocates using the term, post kyberpunk for the strain of science fiction he describes. In this view, typical post kyberpunk stories explore themes related to a world of accelerating technological innovation and ever-increasing complexity in ways relevant to our everyday lives", with a continued focus on social aspects within a post-third industrial era society, such as of ubiquitous data spheres and cybernetic augmentation of the human body. Unlike cyberpunk its works may portray a utopia or to blend elements of both extremes into a more mature to cyberpunk societal vision. Raphael Miranda Werica states, in this fictional world, the unison in the hive becomes a power mechanism which is executed in its capillary form, not from above the social body but from within. This mechanism as Foucault remarks is a form of power, which "...reaches into the very grain of individuals, touches their bodies and inserts itself into their actions and attitudes, their discourses, learning processes and everyday lives." In post kyberpunk Unitopia the capillary mechanism that Foucault describes is literalized. Power touches the body through the genes, injects viruses to the veins, takes the forms of pills and constantly penetrates the body through its surveillance systems, collects samples of body substance, reads fingerprints, even reads the prints that are not visible, the ones which are coded in the genes. The body responds back to power, communicates with it, supplies the information that power requires and also receives its future conduct as a part of its daily routine. More importantly, power does not only control the body, but also designs, re-produces, re-creates it according to its own objectives. Thus, human body is reformed as a result of the transformations of the relations between communication and power. The demon novels by Daniel Suarez could be considered post kyberpunk in that sense. In addition to themes of its ancestral genre post kyberpunk might also combine elements of nanopunk and biopunk. Often named examples of post kyberpunk novels are Neil Stevenson's The Diamond Age and Bruce Sterling's Holy Fire. In television, Ghost in the Shell, Stand Alone Complex has been called, the most interesting, sustained post kyberpunk media work in existence. In 2007, SF writers James Patrick Kelly and John Kessel published Rewired, the post cyberpunk anthology. Like all categories discerned within science fiction, the boundaries of post kyberpunk are likely to be fluid or ill defined. <laughs> Retrofuturistic derivatives As a wider variety of writers began to work with cyberpunk concepts, new subgenres of science fiction emerged, playing off the cyberpunk label, and focusing on technology and its social effects in different ways. Many derivatives of cyberpunk are retro-futuristic, based either on the futuristic visions of past eras, especially from the first and second industrial revolution technological eras, or more recent extrapolations or exaggerations of the actual technology of those eras. Topic. Steampunk The word, steampunk, was invented in 1987 as a jocular reference to some of the novels of Tim Powers, James P. Blaylock, and K. W. Jeter. When Gibson and Sterling entered the subgenre with their 1990 collaborative novel The Difference Engine the term was being used earnestly as well. Alan Moore's and Kevin O'Neill's 1999 The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen historical fantasy comic book series and the subsequent 2003 film adaption popularized the steampunk genre and helped propel it into mainstream fiction. The most immediate form of steampunk subculture is the community of fans surrounding the genre. Others move beyond this, attempting to adopt a steampunk aesthetic through fashion, home decor, and even music. 
This movement may also be perhaps more accurately described as neo-Victorianism, which is the amalgamation of Victorian aesthetic principles with modern sensibilities and technologies. This characteristic is particularly evident in steampunk fashion which tends to synthesize punk, goth and rivet styles as filtered through the Victorian era. As an object style, however, steampunk adopts more distinct characteristics with various craftspersons modding modern-day devices into a pseudo-Victorian mechanical steampunk style. The goal of such redesigns is to employ appropriate materials such as polished brass, iron, and wood with design elements and craftsmanship consistent with the Victorian era. Topic: <laughs> Dieselpunk Dieselpunk is a genre and art style based on the aesthetics popular between World War I and the end of World War II. The style combines the artistic and genre influences of the period including pulp magazines, serial films, film noir, art deco, and wartime pin-ups with retro-futuristic technology and postmodern sensibilities. First coined in 2001 as a marketing term by game designer Lewis Pollock to describe his role-playing game Children of the Sun, Dieselpunk has grown to describe a distinct style of visual art, music, motion pictures, fiction, and engineering. Examples include the movies Iron Sky, Rocketeer, K-20, Legend of the Mask, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow and Dark City, and the games Crimson Skies, Greed Corp, Gatling Gears, Bioshock and its sequel Bioshock 2, The Legend of Korra and Skullgirls. Other proposed science fiction derivatives There have been a handful of divergent terms based on the general concepts of steampunk. These are typically considered unofficial and are often invented by readers, or by authors referring to their own works, often humorously. A large number of terms have been used by the GURPS role-playing game Steampunk to describe anachronistic technologies and settings, including Stonepunk Stone Age Tech, Bronzerpunk Bronze Age Tech, Ironpunk Iron Age Tech, Candlepunk Medieval and Renaissance Tech, and Transistorpunk Atomic Age Tech. These terms have seen very little use outside GURPS. Topic: <laughs> Stonepunk Stonepunk refers to works set roughly during the Stone Age in which the characters utilized Neolithic Revolution-era technology constructed from materials more or less consistent with the time period, but possessing anachronistic complexity and function. The Flintstones franchise and its various spin-offs, Roland Emmerich's 10,000 BC, and the flashback scenes in Crow fall under this category. Literary examples include Edgar Rice Burroughs' Back to the Stone Age and the Land That Time Forgot, and Jean M. Owl's. Earth's Children series, starting with the clan of the cave bear. Topic: <inaudible> Sandalpunk. The term Sandalpunk was coined by Pyramid Magazine, an in-house Steve Jackson Games periodical that published articles about the GURPS role-playing system. It is derived from the sword and sandals. Film genre set in ancient times and used mythical or biblical characters and plots. This genre is set in an alternate universe in which civilizations during the ancient era have access to advanced Fantastic Bronze Age bronzepunk or Iron Age ironpunk technology. This would potentially lead to a less isolated retro-futurist Greece that was never conquered or a retro-futurist Roman Empire that never fell. Prime examples would be the mechanical wonders in films like Jason and the Argonauts 1963 and Clash of the Titans 1981 or the God of War video game series. High technology in such works is rare, usually a one-off by a genius philosopher or a handcrafted trade secret product made by workshops of artificers but potentially indistinguishable from miracles or magic. Another example is the retro-futuristic blend of Imperial Rome and 1930s fascist Italy in Julie Taymor's Titus There are motor vehicles, radios, and simple firearms, but war is still waged by armor-clad troops with swords and spears. Like the other punk genres, the technology doesn't change history completely but it does have societal changes. How would automation affect the semi-skilled and specialized labor markets? 
How would the culture's welfare systems handle technological unemployment? How would they influence nearby rival cultures and their technological development? How would education fare in a world in which the complete writings and conflicting theories and ideas of every natural philosopher and school of thought are available? Would the development of scientific experimentation, standard classification, taxonomy, and mathematics, physics be delayed or accelerated? Would new knowledge and discoveries be freely shared with others or kept secret within a guild or school? Would the necessary pruning provided by the Enlightenment occur or would the accumulated knowledge be overwhelming and fraught with errors and contradictions? It can also be compared with modern day satirical TV shows set in this period like Hanna-Barbera's The Roman Holidays 1972, a rehashing of the Flintstones set in classical Rome or ITV2's Plebs 2013 present, a sitcom in which Rome is a stand-in for modern-day London. This subgenre is noted for having ancient analogues to modern technology like vending machines and water coolers or using manpower or animal power to do mechanical tasks copy and send documents, mow the lawn, or power a vehicle. The characters have anachronistic modern-day concerns and beliefs and are historically aware of modern philosophical and intellectual concepts. Clockpunk <laughs> 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 Clockpunk portrays Renaissance-era science and technology based on pre-modern designs, in the vein of Mainspring by Jay Lake, and Whitechapel Gods by S. M. Peters. Examples of Clockpunk include The Blazing World by Margaret Cavendish, Astro Knight's Island in the non-linear game Pop Tropica, The Clockwork Mansion level of Dishonored 2, the 2011 film version of The Three Musketeers, as well as the video games Thief, The Dark Project, Siberia and Assassin's Creed 2. The term was coined by the GURPS role-playing system. Rococopunk Rococopunk is a whimsical punk derivative that thrusts punk attitude into the late Baroque period. Although it is a fairly recent derivative, it is a style that is visually very similar to the New Romantic movement of the 1980s particularly such groups as Adam and the Ants. As one steampunk scholar put it, "...imagine a world where the Rococo period never ended, and it had a love child with Sid Vicious. Rococopunk has most recently been featured on The X Factor through the artist known as Prince Poppycock. Fashion designer Vivian Westwood, often known as the Queen of Punk Fashion, also mixes Rococo with punk stylings. Raypunk Raypunk is a distinctive sub genre which deals with scenarios, technologies, beings or environments, very different from everything that we know or what is possible here on Earth or by science. Covers space surrealism, parallel worlds, alien art, technological psychedelia, non-standard science, alternative or distorted, twisted reality and so on. Predecessor to Adam Punk with similar cosmic Themes but mostly without explicit nuclear power or exactly described technology and with more archaic, schematic, artistic style, dark, obscure, cheesy, weird, mysterious, dreamy, hazy or etheric atmosphere origins before 1880–1950, parallel to steampunk, dieselpunk and teslapunk. <laughs> now punk Now punk is a term invented by Bruce Sterling, which he applied to contemporary fiction set in the time period particularly in the post-Cold War 1990s to the present in which the fiction is being published, i.e. all contemporary fiction. Sterling used the term to describe his book The Zenith Angle, which follows the story of a hacker whose life is changed by the September 11, 2001 attacks. Decapunk. Decapunk is a recent subset of dieselpunk, centered around the Art Deco and streamline modern art styles, and based around the period between the 1920s and 1950s. In an interview at CoyoteCon, steampunk author Sarah M. Harvey made the distinctions, "...shinier than dieselpunk, more like decapunk," and "...dieselpunk is a gritty version of steampunk set in the 1920s to 1950s. The Big War eras, specifically." 
Decapunk is the sleek, shiny very Art Deco version, same time period, but everything is chrome. Its fandom arose around 2008. Possibly the most notable examples of this are the first two Bioshock games, films like Dick Tracy and the Shadow, and the cartoon Batman, the animated series which included neo-noir elements along with modern elements such as the use of VHS cassettes. Atompunk Atompunk sometimes called Atomic Punk relates to the pre-digital short 20th century, specifically the period of 1945 to 1965, including mid-century modernism, the Atomic Age, Jet Age and Space Age, communism and concern about it exaggerated as paranoia in the U.S. along with neo-Soviet styling, underground cinema, googie architecture, Sputnik and the space race, early Cold War espionage, superhero fiction and comic books, the rise of the U.S. military, industrial powers and the fallout of Chernobyl. Its aesthetic tends toward Populux and Reagan Gothic, which describe a retro-futuristic vision of the world. Notable examples of atompunk in popular media include the Sean Connery era of James Bond, television shows like The Avengers, Doctor Who, The Green Hornet and The Man from UNCLE, cartoons like Dexter's Laboratory and The Powerpuff Girls, Marvel comics like Fantastic Four, The Incredible Hulk, and Spider-Man, movies like The Incredibles and X-Men, First Class, and video games like the Fallout and Stalker series, both of which receiving widespread distribution and critical acclaim. Topic. Steelpunk Steelpunk focuses on the technologies that had their heyday in the late 20th century. In a post describing Steelpunk on the SFF World website it is characterized as being about hardware, not software, the real world not the virtual world, megatechology not nanotechnology. The artifacts of Steelpunk aren't grown, printed or programmed, they're built. With rivets, examples given in the post include Mad Max, Terminator, Barb Wire, Iron Man and Snowpiercer. Other writers suggest Harry Harrison's Stainless Steel Rat series, the Heinlein Juveniles and the film Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. <laughs> Cyberprep Cyberprep is a term with a very similar meaning to post kyberpunk the word is an amalgam of the prefix cyber, referring to cybernetics, and preppy, reflecting its divergence from the punk elements of cyberpunk. A cyberprep world assumes that all the technological advancements of cyberpunk speculation have taken place but life is utopian rather than gritty and dangerous. Since society is largely leisure-driven, advanced body modifications are used for sports, pleasure and self-improvement. An example would be Scott Westerfeld's Ugly series. Topic: Other proposed fantastic fiction derivatives. Topic: Elf punk. Elfpunk is subgenre of urban fantasy in which traditional mythological creatures such as fairies and elves are transplanted from rural folklore into modern urban settings and has been seen in books since the 1980s including works such as War of the Oaks by Emma Bull, Gossamer Axe by Gail Baudino, Artemis Fowl by Ian Colfer, and The Iron Dragon's Daughter by Michael Swanwick. During the awards ceremony for the 2007 National Book Awards, Judge Elizabeth Partridge expounded on the distinction between elfpunk and urban fantasy, citing fellow Judge Scott Westerfeld's thoughts on the works of Holly Black who is considered classic elfpunk. There's enough creatures already, and she's using them. Urban fantasy, though, can have some totally made up f ckeed up sick creatures. Topic. Myth punk Catherine M. Valenti uses the term myth punk to describe a subgenre of mythic fiction which starts in folklore and myth and adds elements of postmodern literary techniques. As the punk appendage implies, myth punk is subversive. In particular, it uses aspects of folklore to subvert or question dominant societal norms, often bringing in a feminist and/or multicultural approach. It confronts, instead of conforms to, societal norms. 
Valenti describes mythpunk as breaking mythologies that defined a universe where women, queer folk, people of color, people who deviate from the norm were invisible or never existed. And then piecing it back together to make something strange and different and wild. Typically, mythpunk narratives focus on transforming folkloric source material rather than retelling it, often through postmodern literary techniques such as nonlinear storytelling, worldbuilding, confessional poetry, as well as modern linguistic and literary devices. The use of folklore is especially important because folklore is often a battleground between subversive and conservative forces and a medium for constructing new societal norms. Through postmodern literary techniques, mythpunk authors change the structures and traditions of folklore, negotiating and validating different norms. Most works of mythpunk have been published by small presses, such as Strange Horizons, because anything playing out on the edge is going to have truck with the small presses at some point, because small presses take big risks. Writers whose works would fall under the mythpunk label include Ekaterina Sedia, Theodora Goss, Neil Gaiman, Sonia Taff, Adam Christopher, and the anonymous author behind the pen name, Bla and GB, Gabla. Valenti's novel Deathless is a good example of mythpunk, drawing from classic Russian folklore to tell the tale of Kishhe the Deathless from a female perspective. Topic: <laughs> Swordpunk. Another punk subgenre that depicts a highly technological society where societal issues remain stagnant around the Middle Ages. It could be considered a more extreme version of swordpunk where society is pushed further back and technology centuries forward, coexisting feudal kingdoms and sword fights with gene recombination, AI and such. <laughs> 